Welcome to The How of Business with your host, Henry Lopez, the podcast that helps you start, run, and grow your small business. And now, here is your host. Welcome to episode 500 of The How of Business podcast. This is Henry Lopez. On this special episode, I share some information about the How of Business podcast and popular resources that can help you start, run, and grow your small business. And I'm excited to also feature a few of my coaching clients as they share their small business success highlights. They'll share some of the challenges that they have overcome this past year and insights on how they have grown their small businesses. This will be part one of the client success highlights because I had so many to share that in a couple of weeks, I'll release part two. That'll be episode 502, and that'll feature even more small business success highlights. Thanks to all of you for listening over the years and supporting the How of Business podcast since I started it back in 2016. This podcast has been focused on the how of small business. It's about sharing information, knowledge, experiences, and resources to help you start, run, and grow a successful and profitable small business. To get more information about the How of Business, including the show notes page for this episode and how you can continue supporting my show and receive workshop discounts, join my monthly group coaching session, all through a Patreon membership, please visit thehowofbusiness.com. I also encourage you to please subscribe to my show wherever you might be listening so that you don't miss any new episodes. Since starting the podcast in April of 2016, we have now released 500 episodes and counting. And for those of you who've been listening for some time, thank you. And you know that I release weekly episodes, except for Thanksgiving week and Christmas week. Those are the only two weeks. Otherwise, every Monday, I release at least one episode of the How a Business podcast. Over the course of the seven or so years, we've had over 4.5 million lifetime downloads of these episodes. And this past year in 2023, we've averaged over 120,000 downloads each month. So thanks to all of you who are listening all over the world, not only in the United States, but thank you to my listeners in Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, Singapore, South Africa, the Philippines, and many more countries. Thanks for listening. I also want to take a moment to thank David Begin, my uh, business partner and also original co-host. David and I started this podcast back in 2016, and he makes still appearances every once in a while as a co-host. He's my friend and my business partner. also want to thank Aubrey Bishop, who is behind the scenes. She's the one that edits these episodes. So thanks, Aubrey. So I want to share with you some insights from one of my clients, one of my business coaching clients. Her name is Ava Stoger, and Ava is the founder and the owner of Maui's Finest Gifts. And you can find her at mauisfinestgifts.com. And her business uh, focuses, there's two parts of it. She has an online component where you can go online and order uh, gift items that are Hawaiian. So anything from candies to candles to gift baskets, people will order them from her online and have them shipped all over the U.S. and Hawaii. And then the other side of her business is the corporate side of her business, corporate Hawaiian gifts. So welcome gifts for events or for uh, rental, vacation rentals. And so she serves primarily in that section of her business on the island of Maui. I love her tagline. Her tagline for her business is, quote, a slice of paradise delivered. Share aloha with Maui's finest gifts, end quote. She built this business essentially by herself. So she's a woman-owned business, actually locally based on the island of Maui. She's lived there for many years. And this is a business that she started a few years ago and it's had tremendous success. But then something catastrophic happened this past summer, as many of you may have heard, or maybe perhaps have been impacted by, and that is the wildfires that devastated a lot of Maui, uh, specifically Lahaina, the downtown historic area where there are lots of shops and restaurants and the famous banyan tree. I've been there many times. All of that was essentially literally burned to the ground by the wildfires. And so, as you may have heard, or you can imagine, the devastation was significant, not just to that area, but to the whole of the island. And as her business being locally based, depending on local vendors and suppliers, her half of her business or part of her business rather being these local uh, hotels that now in that period of time were being occupied by people who needed shelter, were shut down for a period of time, obviously a tremendous impact on her business. But 
her resilience and her fight to get through this. And fortunately, her home was not impacted. It came close, but her home was not impacted. But many people that she knew were impacted directly. But the question I asked her then related to this is, your business and your life were significantly impacted by the recent Maui fires. What are a couple of the things that you did to begin to get through this natural disaster and continue operating your successful business? And here was her answer to me, quote, I knew immediately that I had to pivot as tourism, our main target market had come to a standstill. At the same time, I wanted to help my community and knew the people on the mainland were also looking for a way to contribute. I created a selection of care package comprised of essentials such as blankets, pillows, toiletry kits that were available for purchase on our website. And then we matched these purchases with donations of more products. The efforts were very successful and we were able to contribute more than $10,000 worth of essentials to the people affected by the Maui fires. End quote. So a tremendous response. You know, I spoke with Ava just after this happening or as it was happening. And of course, it was devastating. But she she regrouped. She gathered herself. She responded in a way that not only helped her community, but also helped to keep her business going because uh, all her orders, of course, came to a standstill as far as on the island. And that's how she adjusted and not only supported and did good in her community, but also helped to generate some revenue to keep her business running. The other question I asked her was, what's one tool or system that you use in your business that you find indispensable? I'm always curious as to those tools or systems that people use in their business that they feel are essential. And her answer quote was coaching. Thank you for saying that, Ava. But coaching has been instrumental for her. And so she says, as a first time small business owner, receiving guidance and being able to bounce ideas off of someone who has been a longtime successful entrepreneur has given me more confidence and brought me more success than I could have ever achieved if I were to figure things out on my own end quote. So thanks, Ava. Thanks for saying that. What I would say is that Ava is the type of person who takes that input. She makes a decision at the end of the day, obviously. No coach has all of the answers, but she's willing to learn to take that guidance. And that's something that I know I wasn't open to when I started my first business back in 1991. I had to learn the hard way of searching for mentors and coaches and peers that also understood what I was going through. And then the third question I asked Ava is this, what's your high level business forecast for next year? Are you planning for continued growth? And her answer is, quote, yes, I am always planning for continued growth. Specifically, I see some of this growth coming from further expansion into the corporate gifting market, end quote. Thanks for sharing those highlights, Ava. Again, what I think makes Ava a successful business owner is her perseverance that really got tested this year in dealing with the ramifications and the incredible impact of the Maui fires. Her personality, she has a great charm and personality about her, and so that serves her well when she's communicated, when she's connecting with new potential clients in the hospitality sector, her personality shines through. She, of course, has an incredible talent in putting together these gift items, these curated gift items. If you go to her website, you'll see what I'm talking about. She really has a gift for that. And again, her website is Maui's finestgifts.com. You can order one of her gifts or gift baskets. There's a wide range of gift items that again are locally sourced in Hawaii. I think Ava is also a very trustworthy person. So those are some of the highlights. And thanks again, Ava, for sharing that and allowing me to share that with everybody here on the show. And I wish you nothing but the best and continued success in the next year. At the start of this episode, I mentioned resources that are the most popular resources that I think have helped a lot of business owners this past year. So here is the list of my top six most popular downloads. As many of you know, you may have been to my website, thehowabusiness.com, and you know that I have a whole series of download tools, documents, checklists, those types of things to help you with all different aspects of starting and running a business. But here are the top six. I'm just going to go through them quickly here and I'll have this list as well as, of course, links to download them on the show notes page. You can just go to the howabusiness.com, find episode 500, and I'll have these listed. Number one, business startup checklist. So I have a checklist that helps you at a high level with walking through the key milestones of what is required to launch a business. 
Number two, financial projections worksheet. That was very popular last year as well as my financial projections workshop. But this is a spreadsheet that'll help you put together your pro forma or your financial projections for your new business or your expanded business. Some people complete it. Third is the business plan template. So this is an outline for a business plan, and that's uh, the third most popular download. Number four, entity creation checklist. So what I've created there, whether you're creating an S Corp and an LLC, is a checklist of the steps to go from not having a legal entity to having a legal entity that you operate successfully and separately from your personal business. Number five is the cash flow worksheet, another tool, another spreadsheet that helps you with cash calculating and managing your cash. If you've got the type of business that either has inventory or receivables or some other reason, some other reason why you have a cash flow issue, then this worksheet, and I've done an episode on it as well as a workshop, but this worksheet will help you with managing and projecting what your cash flow needs will be uh, for a future period of time. And then number six of the top downloads of this past year is the business partnership checklist. This is an all-time popular one. This might be the all-time most downloaded checklist. And this is a checklist that helps you really facilitate if you're going to go in business with a partner or partners, or even if you've already started a business with a partner, it'll help you think about all of the different things that you really should at least have a discussion about as early as possible. And then hopefully and ideally you agree to terms that are spelled out in a proper and legal operating or partnership agreement. So many people go into partnership. That initial stage, the, the honeymoon phase is great. We can't imagine how that relationship might go bad, but business and money and those things have a tendency to, to change us. And so we have to be very careful that we don't end up in a horrible partnership situation that affects us personally. And of course, has the potential to ruin your small business. So go to the howabusiness.com, go to the show notes page for episode 500, and there you'll find that list of downloads. My next client success story that I'm excited to share with you is a client that I just began working with this past year, Caden Ralph. And Caden is a young man, young for me anyway, who is the uh, owner of Ralph Sales and Rentals in Broken Bow, Oklahoma. And what Ralph Sales and Rental, you can find them at ralphsalesandrental.com. And Ralph is R-O-U-T-H, sales and, the word and spelled out, rental.com. Again, you can find that link on the show notes page for this episode as well. I love their tagline also, which is helping you build the foundation for tomorrow. So what they do is they specialize in farm and light construction equipment, earth moving, aerial, general equipment uh, that they sell and also rent. And they've got a couple of locations, but primarily based in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, although they do have another location in Hot Springs, Arkansas as well. So if you're in that area and you're looking for equipment, rental or sales, check them out. Their, their integrity, they've been in the business for a long time, but high integrity and a business that I would definitely recommend. So I also asked Caden about what was one big business challenge that he had to overcome this past year. And here's what he shared with me. Quote, opening our second location has been one of my hardest challenges. I have learned a lot through the mistakes I have made. Everything is more complicated than expected once you start doing it. Luckily, I was able to add some fantastic employees that have the same goals that I do, and we were able to push through these obstacles and keep everything going strong. Another one of the biggest challenges we faced this past year was the rise of interest rates. We provide retail and rental equipment to the commercial and consumer industry, and we noticed a large shift in the market. Consumer purchasing in our industry was down almost 40% year to date. Luckily, we were able to capture a larger portion of the commercial market and make up the difference, end quote. So thanks for sharing that, Kate. And, you know, one of the key things he mentions here is the importance of his team. And that's one of the things that it takes. As for him, he's growing his business to the next level. There's no way that he could scale if he continued to make all of the big decisions or be in the process on everything. Be responsible for sales, be responsible for rentals, be responsible for HR, for finance. So what he's learned to do very well, and especially over this past year, is to hire the right people, empower them, and begin to delegate to them to do a lot of these things that he was having to do previously. So congratulations on that, Caden. Second question I asked him is, what makes your business different? 
So again, Caden's business is called Ralph Sales and Rentals in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, and in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And so I asked him, what makes your business different? Why do your customers come back to you for their equipment needs? And here's what he shared with me. Quote, we try to provide excellent service to our customers after our initial business interaction. Whether it's a customer renting or purchasing, we try to provide them with the greatest support possible. I believe that is why our customers keep coming back. End quote. So important component here, these are, his customers are people who are spending, you know, a pretty large amount of money on buying a piece of equipment or renting a piece of equipment for an important construction project. And so they're depending on that relationship well beyond just coming in and, and making the purchase. And so that's what they've done so well is to develop that reputation, that integrity, that they're there for the long term to take care of their customers. And then the third question I asked Caden was, what's one tip you would share with other business owners who are also balancing a busy family life and a demanding growing business? So as I mentioned, he's got two locations and growing. He's got a young family at home. And so he's juggling, as a lot of you are, those two responsibilities. I don't know that we can keep those things separate. Our business and our personal life are intermingled, whether we like it or not. But we do have to have boundaries. But here was his answer to that question. Quote, the biggest tip that has helped me is that you cannot do everything yourself. A good team will help the business grow faster than you will alone. End quote. So that speaks to the point I made a moment ago when he was sharing how he overcame the challenges of 2023. He has realized that it's not a matter of whether he can do it all best or having control or being afraid that you know productivity or revenues might go down if he's not engaged in everything. It, it simply doesn't work. There aren't enough hours in the day uh, for him to be the CEO, to be the owner, also to be a father and a husband. Uh, you have to have a balance to some degree and empowering your team Developing a good team has been a key for Caden to achieve that. I think that a lot of what makes Caden so successful as a small business owner is similar to Ava, his openness, his openness to taking input and to learning. He's not stuck with, that's just the way we've always done it, which would be easy to do because this is a family owned business that his family started before him. So it was very easy to lean on, as I often see with small family owned businesses. Well, that's just the way we've always done it. Caden is open to progressing. He's open to new ideas. And he's got a very clear vision for where he wants this business to take him. What is it that this business is going to provide him and his family longer term? So that keeps him focused and drives him to continue to make the sacrifices that he needs to make now because he knows where he wants to go. He's also a very trustworthy, high ethics person. And so that refers back to the comment that he made about customer service. Integrity is important to him. His word as a business owner in the community is important to him. And I think that's a key reason why he's been so successful with Ralph sales and rentals. Thanks, Caden, for allowing me to share your story. Over the years, I've had an opportunity to develop a series of trusted partner relationships. These are partners that offer services for small business owners. And these are people that I've either come to know through my coaching or my network or that I have engaged for these particular services. And now they are what I call part of my trusted partner services network. So I'd like to highlight a few of them here and the services that they offer and that I recommend. One is uh, my go-to franchise guide, the franchise guide, Giuseppe Grammatico. I've known Giuseppe now for a number of years. He's been a guest on the show numerous times, and he is my trusted referral source for anyone who needs help or is thinking about starting a franchise or investing in a franchise. We most recently did an episode about side hustle franchise opportunities for people who might want to continue to keep their job, their corporate job perhaps, but have some diversification in a business on the side. And so there are franchises that allow for that. But he's the expert on franchises. Again, for those of you who may not know, uh, getting a franchise consultant doesn't cost you anything. He gets paid if and when you actually invest in a franchise, then he gets paid a commission by that franchisor. So there's no reason not to have that help and guidance. 
Another trusted resource is Adam Kirk. If you've been listening to my show, you know Adam has also been on my show many times. He is the founder of Ustas, Ustas, O-O-S-T-A-S. And he is my trusted resource and referral for everything having to do with websites, SEO, and digital marketing. So check out Adam and you can find all of these trusted service providers on my website at thehowabusiness.com. Another trusted partner is Travis Ryder, and what his business provides is very specific. He focuses on employee background checks, and his business is called Perfect Fit Background Checks. So I have a relationship with him. I trust him for what he provides there. I know he does it the right way. There's a lot of laws and and rules that apply to getting an employee background check. So Travis Ryder is my recommended source and trusted partner for employee background checks. So the next client success story that I want to share with you is Haley Johnson, another woman-owned business. So Haley is the founder and CEO of Watley Swim, Watley Swim based in the Austin, Texas area. And so Watley Swim, what their specialty is, is they provide private mobile swim lessons to students from ages two and older in the Austin, Texas area, specifically the counties of Travis, Williamson, Bastrop, Hayes, and Burnett. So if you're in that part of Austin, then you probably have heard of or you should look into Watley Swim if you've got a child that needs to learn how to swim. The instructors come to your pool or to a neighbor's pool where you're getting together to teach uh, two or more kids how to swim. The flexibility of it and expert instructors that she supervises and trains. And so she's been doing this very successfully now for a few years. And so I asked Haley the same question, what was one big business challenge that you overcame this past year? And here was what she shared with me. Quote, Early into the busy season, I realized that I was experiencing a cash crunch due to overhiring. Big mistake. I was able to get back on track with the help of the Howa business and Henry. I now understand cash flow much better and can forecast and plan well, but these lessons came with the painful decision to let go of some of my staff. I'm happy to be on the other side of that struggle, end quote. Thanks for being so transparent, Haley, and sharing that real challenge that a lot of small business owners, especially in the early years of growing, two things that she highlighted. Sometimes we can get ahead of ourselves with hiring, and if the season doesn't go as projected or the year doesn't go as you projected, you might have to make some adjustments, and that's hard to do. It's always hard to let go of people, but that's what we have to do sometimes. And the other component is the cash flow component. I mentioned that earlier as to one of the popular downloads was the cash flow management worksheet, which you can download from the website, thehowabusiness.com. Just go to episode 500 on the show notes page and you'll find that download and also the online workshop. It's not easy managing and forecasting cash. In my experience, most small business owners struggle with that in part because they've never been taught or learned how to do that. And it's not easy, but it is critical if you are having a cash crunch for whatever reason. In this case here for Haley, it was a combination of expenses being too high, revenues not being what they were projected. And she had to make a quick and critical adjustment to make sure that she continued and sustained profitability. The second question I asked Haley was, what's one marketing method that was effective for you this past year? And this is what she shared. Quote, we partnered with neighborhoods who wanted our services by sponsoring community events. The community managers then promoted our services to the residents, end quote. And then the third question I asked Haley is, why do your customers continue to choose Watley Swim for swim lessons over the competition? And what she shared is, quote, We have the most flexible offerings of any swim lesson provider in Austin. The logistics can be difficult sometimes, but we allow our clients to choose the time, day, location, and frequency of their swim lessons. We also have 16 providers, meaning instructors, and four substitutes, which adds up to a lot of available time slots for them to select, end quote. So that flexibility in her business model, not just of coming on site, but also having a lot of time slot options has been one of the key reasons for her success, particularly this past year. I think some of the other things that make Haley a successful business owner, she just has a lot of business smarts. She's just very intuitive, even though she doesn't necessarily have a lot of experience. She just has a natural knack for making business decisions. I am confident beyond a doubt that she will continue to be a successful entrepreneur as long as she wants to. She's willing to put in the hard work. 
She's not afraid of the hard work. Despite just having had a brand new baby, she still balances all of that with managing this business. And I think it's incredibly impressive. Thank you, Haley. Thanks for allowing me to share your story and the success you've had with Watley Swim. I want to invite you to consider scheduling a free coaching consultation with me. I welcome the opportunity to chat with you about your business plans and perhaps offer some guidance and accountability that we all need to achieve success. As an experienced small business owner myself, I certainly understand the challenges that you're experiencing. And often, you know, it's about helping you ask the right questions to help you make progress towards achieving your goals. As I've shared these client success stories with you, you've heard that as a common denominator reaching out for help, getting help through a mentor, a peer, or a coach. And so I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and accountability programs and also my group coaching program. If you're not ready to make the investment and the commitment of a one-on-one -on -one coaching program with me, I also offer a group coaching program at a very affordable monthly subscription that you can cancel anytime. And that gets you access to my monthly group coaching sessions, discounts on my courses and workshops, and additional curated content that I make available only to my patron group. You can find information about that at thehowofbusiness.com. So I'll wrap it up now for this episode and share with you my key takeaway thoughts for you. Starting, running, and growing a small business, and then perhaps having a successful exit is no easy challenge. In my experience, it takes lots of hard work, perseverance, focused effort, the right team, and a little bit of luck. The most important thing, however, is to simply take positive action one step at a time every day towards achieving your goals. Get the help you need along the way and make sure you enjoy your individual unique journey to entrepreneurship. Thanks again to my clients who shared valuable insights on this episode, including Ava Stoger of Maui's Finest Gifts, Caden Routh of Routh Sales and Rentals in Broken Bow, Oklahoma in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and Haley Johnson of Watley Swim in the Austin, Texas area. It's a privilege to serve as your business coach, and I'm excited to watch you continue to achieve great success. On episode 502, I'll feature more small business highlights and insights and other popular resources to help you launch and grow your small business. I wish all of you listening the best as you start and grow your successful and profitable small business. This is Henry Lopez. Thanks for joining me on this episode of The How of Business. I release episodes every Monday morning. You can find the show anywhere you listen to podcasts, including The How of Business YouTube channel and at my website, thehowofbusiness.com. Thanks again for listening. Thank you for listening to The How of Business. For more information about our coaching programs, online courses, show notes pages, links, and other resources, please visit thehowofbusiness.com.